Grace appears to be really basically just batteries, as far right. as I can tell. There's no soul in it. Okay. Like, it doesn't seem to be affecting my character that I'm operating with some, with stolen grace. It's like getting a blood transfusion or an organ donor or something like that. It should it shouldn't change your personality too much. Well, I think in the supernatural. Not universe. the not the grace itself, but just the way that you re your body is reacting. Like when you when his when you started rejecting the last one and he's yes. getting sicker and sicker. I mean that changes the way. That was physically he... debilitating. So how quickly do we get back to that place? Because this not isn't going to last forever. Okay. Not quickly. It takes a while. Mm -hmm. uh, seems to be taking the better part of a season for, oh, okay. for, the, for the battery to die. Okay, but th So it seems like it's a good, reasonably good, like not Rite Aid brand battery, but maybe mid-level Duracell okay. or something like that. Okay. I mean, Cass was so instrumental in, in saving Dean ultimately from being a demon, but he still has the mark of Cain. So where is that relationship? Is he helping to try to fix him with the, like remove the mark? What, what's yes. going on there? Yes, getting getting the mark gone is an important mission for the rest of the season, and I think that 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 uh, struggle is taking the four in terms of personal um, I don't know superpower supernatural I don't I don't really know how to characterize this particular category of illness. Okay. Like, you know, having a mark of Cain or having failing fading grace like those things in in this uh, in this stretch of the season arc uh we're focusing on dean okay and cass's health is not nearly as much of an issue at this point so saying that you're focusing on dean how much is cass involved in trying to remove the mark versus some of the cases of the week uh cass is intimately involved in the in trying to remove the mark okay yeah, yeah. do you think he actually can be successful yeah i mean he, he can't have the mark forever we've got to be able Oh no, I meant. But do you think Cass can be the one to to be because okay. because he was successful ultimately, the last time. I think Cass. I, I mean, I, I think it's a, it's definitely shaping up to be a team effort. Okay. But I definitely, I, Cass will be instrumental in in, in uh, demarking. Okay. Nice. I like the yeah, terminology, which I don't know if that's an actual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we also talked to two hundredth about the return of Claire. Yes. And and what that means and what that looks like, um, does that affect like how Cass views things? I mean, we we kind of saw last season when he was a human for a little while that he has more respect now for humans, and and now meeting this girl, really for the first time because the last interaction we saw was so quick between them and so cold, right. and now he's a different person. How much of an effect does she have on him and, and the future arc for the back half of the season? I think pretty, he, uh, he's definitely impacted emotionally by Claire and wants... It's hard to say what the, the primary motivating forces with Castiel are, but I think that one of the overarching ones is not that noble. It's just guilt. He feels bad for having fucked up this girl's life and he wants to help her. Um, but she is now a you know typical teenager and doesn't really want anything to do with him, and um, and so that dynamic is is really interesting. And I think that it's something new for Castiel, mm -hmm. especially new for him as an angel. He had a little bit of experience with some of that stuff when he was a human, but now having to sort of engage human be a human being on a very personal level that doesn't have anything to do with fighting supernatural forces is. Um, is very new for him, and yet I think his experience as a human does give him much more empathy and make him want want to try a lot harder to make mm -hmm. it work. So, I th I love it. I love what um, what we've shot so far um, with that arc, and I um, I hope there's more of it to come. We've okay. done two episodes so nice. far, and I, I kind of feel like there should be. Okay. Well, when well, last we saw her, I mean, she was young, obviously, but she was willing to, to say, take me instead. Right. Is she very different now? Is she kind of have a different idea of heaven, hell, religion? Yes, she is very different now. Um, you know, I mean, she would be different now. She was, I don't know how old, I guess what, I do know how old. She was 10 at the time we shot that first episode, and now it really is seven years. Like, we've been shooting for seven years since then. Right. She's seven years old. She's a 17-year-old kid. She's 
independent. She's had a rough go of it, you know, because of me taking her dad, among other things. Um, and that um, just makes for a really interesting dynamic. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. What does the <coughs> dynamic look like with Crowley in, in the next few episodes that you guys have been doing? Because uh, he kind of turned his back on Dean. And he's kind of someone that, you know, you don't want to constantly make deals with the devil. Right. But he's obviously always going to be around. <laughs> um, things have gotten, again, again relations with uh, Crowley have gotten strained again. Everybody uh, is, is, is pissed off at him for what he's done. And yet, I think we still need his cooperation in helping to remove the mark of Cain. So okay. we're soliciting his assistance. Okay. 